Hey everybody, welcome back. So recently I was watching one of Big Clive's videos where he showcased this little device. And it's a, called an 11 inch magic arm, and it has that kind of really neat articulating clamp on the end that really works well to connect to just about anything. And the idea behind it is there are arms inside these outside shafts, and then inside here, this bolt goes all the way through, there are some cylindrical pieces that are hollow down the center and have a bevel on the end and then there's a shaft inside this black that's also black part that's also beveled and when you tighten this down it forces all those bevels together forcing the arms that way which then lock this ball pivot on each end and end so you loosen this up and it can kind of swivel all over like crazy and you tighten this down and it's locked so I thought what a great idea to um to mount a camera wherever I wanted one so I ordered one and of course being the cheapskate that I am I ordered the least expensive one I could find that was already in the United States and it arrived kind of in a mess there's these little circlips in the end I don't know if you can see them there you can see where I gouged the material up to get one of them out and they weren't in and the arms inside were out as well and I had kind of a like a jigsaw puzzle thing getting it together and did it wrong once and had to take it back apart but anyway why we're here today is this arm this little knob that goes where this wing nut is now it insert has no threads in it or they were cross threaded and are gone so I put the wing nut on it but this thing has to be tightened pretty darn tight to lock these balls in place those swivels in place so I ran down I also picked up some five millimeter nuts it's five millimeters of course and my local hardware stores have very little in five millimeters but I did get the wing nut and some nuts and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go into Fusion 360 whoops we're gonna go into Fusion 360 and we are going to make one of these and I'm just gonna glue the nut in the end so Let's get over into Fusion. Let's get in. As always, you'll see I have my caliper here. Take some quick measurements off the nuts and off this and put those in first. So let's get over into Fusion and let's take a look at making this one of these. Okay, so here we are in Fusion and I've got just a blank page open. I have not experimented with this yet. It seems like something really simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and wing it and let's get this done now in a way this is going to be a beginner's tutorial but because it is really a simple part but um i'm not going to go into the absolute basics like how you move things around and all that i have earlier videos that that show that so first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some of those measurements that i took earlier and i've already done it so you don't have to watch me type it in but how you do it is you go to modify and down to change parameters and you click the plus button to add a parameter in and then you give it a name the expression is the the value of the measurement so if it's 20 millimeters if it's the uh, width you would type in width under name and under expression type in 20 millimeters you can put a comment in if you want but you don't have to so and i'm going to be using millimeters since that's what everything in 3d printing uses and it's even though i grew up with inches I've learned that you use millimeters when you do 3D printing. So, unless you're making something for like an older vehicle or some older part from the US or the UK where inches is used, you use millimeters. So, I have in outer diameter, shaft diameter, hole diameter, nut diameter flats and nut diameter points. And I did both of those because I'm honestly can't remember which one it's going to ask me for. So, I got both of them. Um, shaft height, grip height, grip being the part that you grab with your fingers, and finger groove diameter. I may need more than that, but that's all I could think of at the moment. So let's start. So I'm going to click create a sketch because I do 3D printing and I like to design my part, how it's going to be printed. I envision this, they call it top, but I call it bottom. I envision that as my print bed. So I'm going to create my first sketch there. Now, how am I gonna how am I gonna print this? It actually is gonna need to be printed from it's gonna need to be printed upside down. So in order to do that, I am gonna create a center diameter circle and I am gonna start here and I am gonna come out 
and what did I call this I called this um, not grip height I called this outer diameter didn't I there it is I put all those in that I can't remember what I called them literally five minutes later okay outer diameter now I am gonna now hit Q to push pull or E to extrude doesn't matter in this case and I am gonna come up in the amount I am gonna come up I am gonna call that what did I call that um, grip grip height jeez grip height and enter to lock it in okay so there is my outer part so now what I want to do is I want to get that shaft in that comes up so I am going to create a sketch on this flat surface I'm going to go up I want to create a circle so I can hit C for circle I can click the circle there or I can click create and come down and click all the different types of circles but I just want a center diameter circle so I'm going to go there I'm going to come out and this is going to be something to do with shaft shaft diameter and enter to lock it in and now I am going to hit Q again to extrude or push pull I'm going to click there and I want to come up and that's going to be shaft height and enter all right so that doesn't look right does it something <laughs> that looks way too long and you know I know what I did when I originally thought about making this I thought about making it from the other way in the other orientation and kind of backwards so I'm not doing it that way now that's how I kind of envisioned it in my brain when I was taking the measurements of it but um, let's change that that height because that's too much so let's come once again to to modify and change parameters let's find our shaft height here at 25 millimeters I'm gonna cut 10 off that and call it 15 15 enter click OK and God you know even that looks like it might be a bit much let me go back to my part here with the caliper and let's see how much that extends up and uh, it extends up 12 so you know what 15 and 12 now nah, you know what let's change it what the hell modify um, change parameters this is what I go through when I design stuff and a lot of times I will design one ahead of time so that I go through all of these off camera so that you don't have to put up with all of it but you know some people have said to me hey you know we want to see what you go through because we go through that and it sounds like it look we feel like we're a bunch of idiots and you do it so smoothly so let's let's put in all the bumps and the warts and 12 and okay and okay so there's my 12 millimeter height now let's put a center hole in it let's do that next so we are going to create a sketch on this surface this very top and it's going to be another circle and this is going to be something about hole hole diameter and it should be five millimeters okay and we are going to cue to push pull again now here's here's an interesting thing and I was thinking about this when I was making it and that is should I put the hole all the way through I mean it's not going to be as pretty with the hole all the way through but sometimes being able to get to the opposite side of a hole is kind of handy and um, you know I think I am you don't have to you can leave this a blind hole and that would probably be just as good too because I don't think there's any way my my bolt is going to stick all the way through oh you know what let's not let's not let's um <laughs> let's pull this hole down um, I didn't put a depth in let's do that now modify change parameters and let's put a hole depth in so plus and we'll call this hole depth oops hole depth and let's call it 15 millimeters I can't imagine it needs to be any more than that but let's call it that 15 millimeters and okay and now we're gonna have to let's go back to my come down here to my history this down here is your history this lets you go back and change something so let's say edit feature and let's change the 15 to whole depth and it'll still be 15 and that's fine now should I have should I have put the nut in first you know I think I should have I think I should have put the nut hole in first I think I'm going to and I think I'm gonna do that 
So I'm going to do control Z back and control Z back until I'm on this sketch, but I haven't done the hole yet so let's put the nut size in first let's see if because I'm getting the feeling that once that center hole is there I'm gonna have a nah I don't know I don't know let's let's go back to where we were let's go control um what is control undo um control redo redo there's a redo button up there in the top left let's redo it and let's get the hole back and let's see if this works so let's um Let's go ahead and try to put the nut hole in. So we're going to create a sketch on this top surface. And this is going to be a polygon. And circumcised polygon is fine because we want to use a center point. And I was concerned I might not have a real center point, but I do. Okay, so we want to come out. And we want to come out. And this is giving me a... A, not a diameter but a radius so I'm gonna have to you see and it's a radius on the flat so I'm gonna have to go nut diameter flats and I'm gonna have to divide that by I'm gonna have to divide that by two aren't I um, nut diameter flats um, divided by two enter okay so there it is it let me do it and if I haven't, if you haven't watched any other videos and you don't know, you can use mathematical formulas there in the, in that little dimension box. So that's why I could do nut diameter divided by two because it was asking for a radius. It was asking for half the diameter. So, and just remember that you, to, there is no division sign in this or no x for a, a multiplier. You have to use um, asterisk for the multiplier and slash for divide. So. Now we're going to cue to push pull again. We're going to select this and we're going to cut down. And when you pull down, it turns it. You'll see down here it turns into from an extrusion from a join or extrusion into a cut. So and I want to cut down. Whoops, dot <laughs> nut. I want to cut down. I thought I had a nut depth in nut thickness. Uh, I thought for sure I had one in. Nut thickness. I guess I didn't put one in. Let's go do it now. Modify. Change parameters. And I thought for sure I put a nut thickness in. I did not. Okay. Let's do it now. So plus add. And we're going to add nut thickness. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just going to call it nut thick, and I'm not going to go any deeper into that than that. And what is the nut thickness? I got my caliper here in my hand. You can't see me. Um, nut thickness is um, 3.87 millimeters. Let's call it 4. Okay. And okay, again, now that I have nut thick in, and let's do this again. Cue to push pull. Click there. Come down, and the amount is nut thick. up it needs to be minus nut thick there we go and okay and god that looks like way too deep way too deep <laughs> but it's not it's four millimeters let's go back in i'm going to right click down here in my it whoops down here in my history on the bottom i'm going to right click that last operation and click edit feature minus nut thick that should be correct. That just looks like an awful lot. Visually looks like a lot. Let's go back into our parameters and look. Make sure I didn't screw it up. Four millimeters. Let me measure that stupid little thing again. Nope, that is four millimeters. Okay, it just looks funny for some reason. So there's our nut. Now, we want to put in... Now, now that's basically it, right? We could leave it like that, and we would have a little hand turn wheel, but you know what? It wouldn't be fun to hold on to and turn. So let's put those grooves in it. And to do that, I think I'm going to come right to this bottom here, and I'm going to click Create Sketch on the bottom. Now, should I put my um, fillets in now or later? Let's put them in later. I don't think putting them in now would work. So, and I want to come directly to the bottom, so I'm looking directly at it. So I'm going to click my little box up here. So there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to create a circle. And I'm going to create my circle right here on this top point. And 
what did I call this? I called this um, finger groove diameter. And there it is there. I'm going to hit. And, and I guessed at this from what the original knob was. It may not be right, but let's try it. Finger groove diameter. There we go. Now I'm going to hit Q to press pull. Whoops, that's the wrong part. I want to do that one. I don't want to do that one. And I want to go this way with it. And man, that is awful deep. Eh, it's funny, it's not right. I don't think that's right. Um, yeah, that's too much. So let's um, let's escape that. Let's come in to modify and change parameters. And let's change that finger groove diameter from 20 to 15 because 20 looks like it's way too much. 15 and enter. And OK, and let's see what that looks like. Ah, I'm liking that a lot better. Okay, so Q or E, click on the one that's on the part because our diameter of the part bisects it. If I wanted to build my knobs up, I could use this one instead of this one, but I want to cut my knobs through. Actually, it might look kind of cool with them, with them built up like that, but yeah, I'm not doing that today. <laughs> so we're coming this way with it, and I am going to come over here to distance, and I'm going to change my distance I'm on the wrong one. I'm on extent, aren't I? I want to exchange, there we go, to object. And I'm going to click this face as how far I want to go. That way I could change the thickness of this and this cut would go all the way through. No matter how much I change this thickness. I mean, I could drag that arrow up, you know, 100 millimeters and it would always go through. But that's ah, kind of sloppy. I don't like doing that. So say OK to that. So there's one of them, but I need four more. So to do that, let's go to create. And we're going to create a pattern. And our pattern is going to be a circular pattern. And now over here in our circular pattern box, it's going to ask me what I want a pattern. And I don't want to pattern a feature. Yes, I do. I do want to. Normally it comes up faces, came up features. OK, don't know why. I do want to pattern a feature. And I am going to come down here to my history. And I am going to select that last extrusion, which was that hole cut through. And axis, this is sometimes where it can get to be fun. I need that center axis. And sometimes that center axis can be hard to get to if it's in the middle. This time it's going to let me do it. I know it's Z axis. I could also come up here to origin, spread my origin down, and select Z there. And how many do I want? I want a total of five, I think. And say OK. And what's that look like? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think that I still think they're too deep. I, I still think they're too deep because I'm going to fill it these and fill it them is going to make them look even smaller. So I'm going to come back to modify and change parameters. And I am going to change my finger groove diameter from 15. Let's make it 12. And let's see what 12 looks like. I'm liking that a lot better. Okay, so now let's put our fillets in. And the other one was domed here. And honestly, if I was going to dome it, I would have already done it. I honestly think that's a useless thing to have in it. I, I th almost think a dish would be better than a dome. But you know what? If I dish it, then I'm going to have to put support in for it, maybe, or have a really rough surface there. And I don't want that. So I'm going to leave it flat because this is 3D printing. So now what I want to do is I want to fill it that. So I'm going to click Modify and Fill It. And where's Fill It there? I can also just tap F on the keyboard or click my button here. And I'm going to fill it this, 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 and this. And that should be five, right? It does say five edges. I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to do the other sides as well. And if you accidentally get one wrong and click the wrong thing, don't worry. Just hold control and click the thing you did wrong. And sometimes you don't even have to hold control. So now I should have 10 edges. And I do. I have 10 edges. Do I want to fill it anything else? Um, I don't really think anything else needs to be filleted, do you? I don't really think I'd want to fill it in here. I don't really see the purpose. Uh, you know what? Let's do this one and let's see what it looks like. Um, and how much do I want to fill it? I want to fill it. Um, I didn't put a number in for this in the parameters. 
Um, let's, because I'm really not sure, be honest with you. Let's try five and see what five looks like. I can, okay. You know what? I think I did fill it the wrong thing, didn't I? I should have filleted those inside edges, not those outside edges. Let's change my five to two. Um, okay, that's all right. I'm going to leave that there, and I'm going to fill it the insides, too. Yeah, let's try that. I mean, what can go wrong? We can always come back and redo it, right? So let's say OK there. Let's hit F for fill it again. I think these were the ones I wanted to do. I'm also thinking I should have done those first. Uh, what's all that going to do? Let's try one and see what happens. Well, I don't know. That might be OK. What do you think? I think that's OK. Um, so let's, I'm going to cancel that and do it again. F for fill it. And we're going to do that one. I think I did the wrong one first, but it's looking like Fusion is helping me out and making it okay anyway. That, that, and that, sometimes Fusion can be really, really helpful in, in keeping you from screwing up. Other times, it seems like it does everything in its power to help you screw up. Oh, and look, it filled that too. Oh, I didn't even see it do that. When did it do that? I mean, it's okay, but I did not mean to fill with that. But it's okay. I like it. And um, what are we going to do here? Two again. Let's try two again. Uh, you know, I think this one could almost be a little bit more. Let's try three. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. I'm not going to add those into the parameters because, be honest, I never plan on changing the fillets in this. I probably should. It's being lazy not to, but um, I'm not going to. So there we go. There is our part. I could fancify it even a little bit more, and I still think this shaft, this height here, is probably way more than it needs to be. And you know what? I think I will modify that because it doesn't really need to be that tall. So modify and change parameters and change parameters and let's change that 12 to 10. Shaft height 12, let's make it 10. And I know that's not much of a change, but um, okay, I like that better. Okay, that looks good. Let's get this over into Cura and let's see what it looks like over in Cura. So to do that, first off, let's give it a name. Let's go to up to our little floppy disk icon. I can't believe we're still using floppy disk icons in 2020. And let's give it a name. Let's call this magic arm knob. And we're going to save it. And our name under here under unsave should change shortly. And it does. And now what I'm going to do is right click on it and left click save as STL. And I'm just going to say save to all this because I've never found a reason to change any of this. I know Fusion can do some things now with meshes that it couldn't do when I first started using it. But to be honest, I've never really, I've never really used Fusion for any of that. I'm just going to save this to the desktop magic arm knob version one and say save. <coughs> as long as I don't get any error messages, I should now be able to cluttered and see magic arm version one someplace. And, um, there it is right there, Magic Arm version 1. I'm going to double click it. And it'll open in Cura 4.5.0 and watch, it'll tell me there's a new version of Cura. Oh uh, yeah, 4.6 is available. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to do that a little later. I want to print this first. Here it look here's what it's going to look like in Cura. I actually think that looks super nice, super nice. I still think that nut depth is a bit too much, but damn it, I measured it. So anyway, let's, um, I'm set on TPU. I don't want to be on TPU. Am I on the right printer? I am, what am I, printer am I going to print this on? Um, I think I'm going to print this on the Ender 3, and um, I think I'm going to print this out of black ABS, because ABS is really tough. And um, I have black ABS, and I don't have any black, any black. Um, I think, honestly, I think PLA would be fine for this. I don't have any black PLA, and I don't really want a yellow or a purple knob on my, on my black magic arm thingy. So I'm going to go ahead and come down to 
Um, Chuck ABS All Metal Hot End number two. Why do I have a number two? I don't seem to have a number one. Okay, whatever. Uh, and there we go. I use a 0.32 layer height, 0.5 line width, um, wall thickness 1.2. Honestly, I don't think any of this is going to matter. If this breaks, it's going to be where the nut is glued in. So we're just going to give this a go. Um, temperature 235. This is going to be in the enclosed ender 3 with the SKR 1.3 board, although the board doesn't really matter. The all metal hot end doesn't really matter either. The only thing that really matters in this case for the ABS is the enclosure. And all those settings have worked fine for me in the past, so let's click slice. Let's see how long it's going to take to print it. And it's telling me it's going to take 27 minutes to print it. That's not very long, is it? I love 0.32 layer height. Tempted to go to 0.4. But anyway, I'm going to save this. I'm going to take it over to the printer. I'm going to print this, and I'll be right back and show it to you, and we'll see how it works. Okay, I'm back, and here is the printed final printed part. And I'm trying to get it so you guys might be able to see. Black is always hard to show. Um, you can see that it's got the hole down in the middle. I'm hoping you can see that. And the nut-shaped hole, then the hole down in the middle for the stud as it sticks through. And um, I don't know, for a, for a version 1 part, I'm pretty pleased with it. It is about the same size as the original. Here's the original one. It is pretty close to being the same size. And one thing I did notice, however, and I'm almost thinking this is a good idea. This was a good accident, maybe, to call it. The hole for the nut is just slightly too small for the nut itself. So what I think I'm going to do is take this 5mm bolt, thread it on there, take this lighter, heat it up, and push it in. And because I've been burned enough in my life, I don't want to be burned again. Let's stick it in a little pair of ice grips, and let's see how that works. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? I can wreck it and print a different one, right? So, let's try that. I mean, I've done this before with this stuff, and it's actually worked out surprisingly well. But let's just see. That should be good enough. Let's see if we can get this to go in there for us. And there it goes. I hope you saw that. We're sunk right down in there. Let's kind of look at it from the side and make sure we're mostly straight. Let's unthread it. And there we go. So, I'm going to let this cool down and let's put it to the test a little bit. That worked out shockingly well. My only real question is is will it be strong enough? Will I be able to tighten it without breaking the plastic? And that just doesn't want to focus. I'd cuss at it, but you know, there's already a guy on the, on YouTube that does that. And um, although it does seem to work for him. Is that cooled down? Ow, no. That would be no, it hasn't. So while I'm letting that cool a little bit more, let's get this wing nut off of here and carefully holding this thing so it doesn't fall apart because it's kind of sucky to get it all back together again. So I'm Let's thread that on there and that will help cool it down a little bit. And like I say, my only question is, is how much I'm going to be able to tighten that before the plastic breaks. Now I do want to let that cool down, but um. And you need to tighten it enough so that these swivels on the end don't continue to move. And you got to kind of get the teeth lined up a little bit. It's already a little bit more. Oh, that's pretty solid right there. That one still moves. One of the things about this, and it's probably because it was the cheap $15 one and not the $100 one, is... um. As you wiggle it, you can tighten it more. And that's just because their machining tolerances for making those balls and rods is pretty poor. But to me, this whole thing was kind of a proof of concept. Wow, I can really tighten that a lot. Anyway, there you go. There you have it. 
I made myself a knob and version one worked. Pretty impressive, huh? And it actually can be tight and pretty damn tight. And it seems to have gotten this thing more than tight enough for me to use. And I get rid of that wing nut. Now I can have a knob on there again. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope we learned a little something in fusion today and in other things that might work for us in the future. So if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I will catch you the next time. Bye for now.